blatant injustice for imprisoned Nigerian atheist activist Mubarak Bala. So this is an important update on his case. Uh, December 22nd was the 600th day the Mubarak Bala spent in police custody. Bala, an ex-Muslim atheist and president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria, was arrested at his home in Kaduna State on April 28th, 2020, for allegedly insulting the Prophet Muhammad via social media. He was taken to the Muslim-majority state of Kano, where he faced blasphemy accusation and charges from religious figures. Prosecutors claim that Bala confessed to the crimes while imprisoned, while his attorney was not present. Even though Nigeria's customary constitution published, punishes blasphemy with a possible two-year sentence, in regions where Sharia law is applied, blasphemers are punished with death sentences. Bala has already spent nearly two years incarcerated, but has not yet faced trial. James Ibor, Bala's attorney, said that Bala has been denied access to health care, kept in solitary confinement, and forced to, quote, worship the Islamic way since he's been imprisoned. How could they, like, do this? Like, do they not respect their own goddamn laws? Like, like no. Like, no, like... I mean, is there no consequences in Nigeria? I mean, Nigeria is not like every other. Nigeria is the biggest African country, like by population, right? It's like it, it's. I think a, so. Yeah, it is going to be one of the top five population worldwide at some point. I think. I think I it's number correctly. six right now. Yeah, it's, and it's going to grow even like it's going to that ranking is going to increase like, and it's also a major sort like economic force, um, and. In kind of like and like how could the, how could the law work like this in Nigeria? Like this is a country full of you know skills and experts and you know a lot of people a lot of expertise a lot of like educated people come out of Nigeria and there's a lot of potential and this is the legal framework that is supposed to work on like you could just run against your own standards against your own constitution. Just be like, yeah, no law. Like, the, for how long did he ha not have access to a lawyer? Does he have access to a lawyer now? Now he was kept without a lawyer for, I believe, between six to nine months. They oh didn't God. know like, if they didn't know if he was alive for eight months. Yeah, but like, like how? Like, you like? Okay, it's one thing for you to have bad laws. It's one thing for you to have laws. And your own legal system just ignores it. Like there's nothing stronger. Mm -hmm. There's no no more effective way for you to dismiss the legitimacy of your own legal system, where the laws that you have on uh, that you're supposed to abide by, your own legal system denies them, just ignores them. Like you cannot be taken seriously as a country when your legal system denies the its own laws ignores its own laws like you you're not like you can't sit at the adult table when you when you act like that like you Seriously. nobody can you can't be trusted you can't be like a, a stable le legal structure is the foundation for a for people to have trust with another country for you to know how things work for people to be able to do business migrate become citizens have relations other countries have relationships with you send talent accept talent like that's the framework where stabi stability of a country is founded upon and then you just you yourself if other people ignore that it's one thing but if you yourself if your own legal system ignore it you're just basically showing how unstable your entire country is like i don't understand so like, i wanted to even... give yeah, I want to give a specific update. So he was supposed to have a hearing this month to move forward. But then midday on the day of the hearing, all of a sudden his lawyers received words that the hearing was canceled. And the justification was, oh, the judge had eye surgery the day before. And then, so they just moved it again. So they're com continually um, just doing repeated adjournments and, and just continuing to move his hearings back and back and back, refusing to acknowledge the case. He was held without charge for over a year. And he was, oh, he was denied access to his legal team for more than five months. He's been repeatedly denied access to medical care because he has hypertension, not to mention in the middle of the disease that's going around. And um, in terms of, oh, do they not follow their own laws? 
the Kano State Police Commissioner repeatedly refused to comply with an order issued by a magistrate requiring the police to grant Bala access to his legal team. And the Kano State authorities have failed to comply with a ruling for the Abuja High Court that determined that Bala should be released on bail. So the High Court is saying, you haven't charged this man, you have to release him on bail, blah, 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 yada, yada. And they're like, no, we're just going to keep him. reportedly in solitary confinement and reportedly also forcing him in into confession and also forcing um him him to pray forcing him to pray is that like part of the legal structure that like oh yeah you know you like you have to pray islamically because like is that like is that part of the law or is that just like just them being in just being intuitive just be like, hey, we're just being creative here. <laughs> and it's it's really difficult because there's um, here's a quote from the article that we wrote: the treatment of pre-convicts is not spe- necessarily specific to Bala, as just 28 percent of prison inmates have been tried and convicted of a crime, according to the Nigerian Cons- Correctional Service. 28 percent are tried and convicted. Well, so there's obviously a lot of issues. Like that, there are many aspects about this that is certainly motivated by the fact that he is an atheist, that he is an ex-Muslim specifically, and this can be well evidenced by the fact that um, I personally have seen Nigerian police officials talking about how they will take it upon themselves to kill him because he insults the prophet, right? Um, but even beyond the specific. Um, uh, motivations against him there is this issue of such a low conviction rate of people actually g- reaching trial um shuva was saying okay. the idea of a free thinking atheist slash non-religious person being granted human dignity is something that a lot of countries are unwilling to accept that's unfortunately very true okay so then i'm gonna highlight something and i'm gonna respond to it you have to let me respond to it because sometimes yes. you don't let me ages okay so rebecca is saying the U.S. is in deep shit because because after I said that if you don't have a good legal, if you ignore your own laws, you can't be taken seriously. Rebecca responds by saying, then the U.S. is in deep shit because it ignores its own laws routinely. Rebecca, that you're so full of crap right now here because, uh, first of all, what about is them again? Okay, every time how self obsessed so many Americans are or so many Westerners are when they can't just last for five goddamn minutes without us like showing how ridiculous the laws of another country are without them having to bring it back to the US. They're saying the United States is also horrible. That one, so congratulations of doing one of the most ridiculous cases of what about is them. Secondly, as as bad as 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 common as of um, it is for you to find examples in the U.S. legal systems of cases that went bad or people that were unjust, you know, unjust uh, unjustly treated or judgments that were wrong. The United States, I know, like if you're a leftist, some of, for some of you leftists, it might be hard to hear. Okay. Um, if we don't condemn every goddamn thing about the U.S. or just constantly say that the U.S. is evil and almost everything that it does. I know this might be hard for you to understand or hear, but the United States has one of the best legal systems on the planet, okay? It has one of the most just and one of the strongest and one of the most reliable with all its flaws, with all, and there are plenty of flaws. There are plenty of flaws but it is still one of the most reliable and just legal systems on the goddamn planet. Okay? Okay. And it's not even comparable. Like imagine, imagine <laughs> in the United States, you were like, like th- you had a case like this, right? Where somebody was kidnapped for blasphemy by the police was not able to have access to a lawyer for up to for close to a year just like nobody knew if it was even dead or alive okay 
with no access to a lawyer for blasphemy and was forced forced to pray right as punishment all of this at the same time like find me an example of that like it's not even comparable it's ridiculous to even suggest something like that but yeah um i wanted to quickly highlight that um i put it in the live chat wait a second um that humanist international has a campaign where they are um raising money for mubarak Balat's defense so i put the link to this in the description um at justgiving.com slash campaign slash free mubarak bala with hyphens in between um so please consider um donating to this humanist international is an extremely reputable um humanist uh organization and um they do insanely good work and they are basically the one of the primary people taking up the cause of mubarak Bala's defense and they are who i go to first to um see what the updates on his case are um so please consider donating to this and i would also highly recommend that people check out this article that was just released by um the associated press because um it was called non-believers across africa risk freedom and family support and this is partially what our article was based off of because i was um, impressed and very excited to see the issues that um african atheists face highlight in such a big publication as the associated press so they interview mubarak ball's wife they interview his legal team they also interview other people like um that are involved in atheists of kenya or even leo igwe who Armin and I got to talk to last year about the case of Mubarak Bala, an amazing Nigerian atheist and um, humanist. And um, I think it's really important that we highlight the issues that atheists face in Africa specifically, because like this article gets into, they say that basically to be African, it is assumed that you are deeply religious. And to not be religious and to actually reject faith is by seen by some people to reject your africanness so we really i feel really compelled to um highlight what african atheists go through and stand with them um against the discrimination that they face you know i'm so glad to see this on mp because you know a lot of people we went through a phase where a lot of people assume that talking about atheism and people being mistreated for their lack of um religion was just like cringy atheist reddit talk on um you know you know on social media or people just trying to be edgy um and people who thought that they're like superior or extra smart for just being atheists and just wanted to take part in the victimhood olympics that was the perception a lot of people had because uh atheism did go through a cringy phase on phase on you know social media as well i mean it was inevitable um but like coming out of that i'm, I'm glad like this like it's being taken seriously like it's not like you know just because you meet like cringy atheists online doesn't mean that like non-believers are not being mistreated um when you see like a, a such a you know, AP highlighting it like that. It gives you hope that maybe like this will not be, you know, because it is, guys, we, we're not, me and Susanna, we're not trying to take part in the victim Olympics because we, me and Susanna are fine. Okay. Like we're not trying to be like, oh, poor us atheists. Look at us. Feel sorry for us atheists. Me and Susanna, we're not facing any of this. We're like, we're like, we're completely secure. Okay. Like, so, like we're not trying to you guys make you sympathize with us okay but it is true for other atheists that they're one of the most ignored groups out there when it comes to the mm -hmm. level of threats and oppression that they face like almost every other minority group gets more attention than this group when when people come after them i mean i'd say and i'm not saying those other groups shouldn't get their attention they should okay but if you go after Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Jewish people, to the same to the extent that you go after non-believers, there are institutions, organizations, 
fundraising campaigns, um, advocacy groups. There are just there is a major backlash, and rightfully so. Again, rightfully so. Good for them that they are that there is a that they make sure that there is a backlash. But when it comes to atheists, we just have to rely, and hopefully AP will cover it because we don't have strong advocacy groups. Okay, uh, and again, this is why you have to support organizations like. What was the other one? Humanist International mm-hmm. um, and, and and also Atheist Republic. Okay, because we are trying to be the backlash that doesn't exist when they go after atheists. Okay, so mm-hmm. please help us out. Um, and our- secular rarity <laughs> saying, speaking of, did you know the Atheist Republic has a Cape Town based YouTube channel? Yes. Speaking of highlighting and amplifying African atheists, go check out the YouTube channel, uh, Atheist Republic Cape Town, where started by people from our Cape Town consulate highlighting um, not only atheists from South, South Africa, but actually atheists across Africa in general. In fact, um, Dean, who runs the channel and our Cape Town consulate, recently told me that they are going to be expanding not only from English um, videos, but they're going to be expanding to Afrikaans language um, content. So that's awesome. Mm. That's fantastic. Um, Asian American is saying Armin is checking his privilege. Well, I can't just (laughs) claim that I'm a leftist. I have to act like it as well sometimes, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it's it's really true though. Um, I think it is important to highlight that like we're fine and that this isn't something that we claim for ourselves. But because we are fine, we take that opportunity to highlight what other people are going on, going through. Wait, the, uh, um, the Cape, the that the YouTube channel they had, they did they had Leo. They Igwe? had Leo Igwe, yeah. Oh I love God. Leo. Guys, He's go check best. him out. Go check them Leo out. What Igwe should people is one search? of the most inspiring atheist activists I've ever What should people search to? for on YouTube to find the channel? Just Atheist Republic Cape Town. Okay, guys, search for Atheist Republic Cape Town to find the channel. Okay. Uh, or they cover if you're mostly? on our YouTube channel, you can go to our channels tab and you should find it easily. Mm-hmm. And would they cover um, atheism and religion related stuff mostly focus on Africa? Yeah, they they mostly interview African atheists just to talk about okay, their experience. Okay, so if you're interested in Africa and atheism at the same time, that's your cha- that's the channel for you. Okay. Cool. A music guy being a fantastic mod and put a link right in the oh, live chat. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Music guy. Okay. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.